Hi everyone, it's Mike with Presentation Plus Ups. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how you can take one object like a good old fashioned rectangle and really plus up your presentation. Let's get started. Okay, everyone, you know, here's the deal. I've been watching quite a bit of a show on HBO Max called Julia. It's about Julia Child. And um, I know it's not super cool. I might need to turn in my man card for this one. One of the things that they mention in that show is the fact that chicken is super versatile. And, and so for me, kind of like in the culinary world, the good old fashioned shape is so versatile in terms of constructing a cool presentation. So I wanna show you how I've taken one humble shape like a rectangle and turned it into a dynamic element within a presentation. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this deck, this presentation, and you're gonna notice that we have one shape. Now you might not even know what it is, but here's the spoiler alert. What I'm gonna put my laser on here is actually just a rectangle. I've put an inner drop shadow in it to give us a bit of, almost like it's cutting through the picture effect. And let's see how this plays out. So a shape, I've squeezed it and made it small. Let's see how this looks when we take this and cycle it over about seven or eight slides within the course of a presentation and also pair it with the morph transition. You see where I'm going with this culinary thing? We're going to pair it with the morph transition. So let's take a peek here. All right, so here's slide two. You can see that we've gone from a thin blade to a little bit taller and then added some text on it. We're now switching it over where it becomes a living, breathing piece of a second element of a slide. And now it's going to be used in lieu of bullet point builds to highlight different features. And then if we get into a featured section, we can then bring it to the back and have it be part of a featured section and have different elements, which incidentally are just shapes that I've typed on and brought those up. So there's so much that you can do, even a recap to have shapes and bring a little motion with the morph transition. So if we're gonna look at the back end of how this works, let's take a peek right now. All right, so we're gonna go on this. First thing I'm gonna do is just put this slide presentation in slide sorter mode. You can see that's 10 slides. It feels like a living, breathing organism. Each slide is almost like a little bit of a film strip. So let's just track this. Now I do have my overall, my selection paint on. So that's something that if you've watched any of my videos, you know I strongly advocate that you add the selection pane to your quick access toolbar up here. Do that, you need to go on the home menu, go arrange, go down to selection pane, right click it, add it to the quick access toolbar. And that will give you this ability to see what's going on on any slide. So if I click on slide one, you can see everything that I've got on this here. And I'm actually gonna really uh, turn down this slide's view. You can see we're at 50%. I've got an oversized picture. Uh, we have that background motion. And really to make that, all I did was I inserted a shape. Let's just insert a shape on here anywhere we want. I got rid of the outline on it, I added it white, and then I went into my shadows, went to shadow, and did inner shadow. And if you look at that, you can see it gives you that, that cool little effect where it looks like, it's almost like a mat from a framer on a picture, and we're slicing a bit of the picture out of the way. So it's a cool effect as you move it around from slide to slide. So just a fun thing. If you're doing a presentation early on, what I'd recommend is you might wanna name it. So you might wanna name this something. So I'm just gonna call it hello in this case. But you can see originally on this one, I named it background motion. So that way from slide to slide, as we go to different slides, you can basically see where it's at, okay? So in a previous video, what I did mention on the selection pane is now you can lock things. So if you wanna make some slides like this that basically become default style slides for you, you can just go ahead and drag that shape wherever you want it and then lock it. And then you can work on top of that shape without moving it around. So you truly have locked it. So that is one of the reasons why now I hardly place anything on my slide master. If you look at my slide master, it's real Spartan. There's no logos. There's a couple of different backgrounds, a couple of different uh, default text placements. But in general, I don't put much on my slides. What I do is I make sure my slide master, which is the tallest slide that I've set the morph transition at about 1.25 seconds. I think the default is two seconds. 
And if you do this on the slide master and then hit apply all, it just cascades it through all of these iterations or layouts of your slide master. So that's something I would highly recommend doing. And that way, everything that you're adding, every time you add a new slide in here, so if I hit right click, new slide, you're gonna notice that the transition is defaulted to morph. And then if I add something like this shape to it, which I'm gonna do right now, I'm just gonna paste it. I'm gonna make sure I set it to the background and let's just make this shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bring this all the way to the top and then just drag this thing all the way right here. So if you wanted to flip flop it and take your text box and give this more of a, uh, a black color, we can have that ability if I go into presentation mode that your background becomes a living, breathing piece right there, okay? So, so many ways, it's so versatile. As I said, it's like the chicken of the slide deck presentation. Well, I'm gonna get rid of that one because we don't have it. It's nothing we want. So the rest of this is artistic motion. In my mind, I said, hey, we want a welcome slide. We want to welcome people, say that we're glad that we're there. We're gonna let them know what we're gonna do today. And then we would highlight those little features in a nice build and then maybe segue into this, okay? So I think you can see that we've done that if I go back into presentation mode. So incidentally, a little tip for you here, if you are in working mode and you wanna go into presentation mode or as they say, your slideshow mode on any presentation, you can hit Shift F5 on a PC. On a Mac, I'd have to look it up. But on a PC, you can select any slide and hit Shift F5 and it goes right into slideshow or presentation mode for right there. Okay, so if we look at this, We'd say, welcome, we're so glad you're here. Forgive me the fact that right now I'm on the green screen, so I'm covering up a little bit of it. And then today's mission, right? So we've covered the shape animation of the week. The shape is the morph, the animation is just, excuse me, the shape is the styled feature. How you animate it is simply duplicate the slides and use the morph transition. And then you're seeing right here, we're reviewing bullet point alternatives. And incidentally, at the end, I'll give you the demo deck. But if we wanna look at these bullet point alternatives, this is staying with our shape concept. And if I back this up, you're gonna see all I've done is added rectangles here. And once I've added a rectangle, for example, if I bring one right up here and if I just type on it, so let me just bring in a fresh rectangle. Let me do you one more solid here. Let's just, um, let's take this slide. I'm gonna duplicate this and uh, just get rid of these, okay? And all we would do is add a rectangle. So the slow way is hit insert, go shapes, draw the rectangle, or you can just have this. So you've just gotten rid of one click. We're just gonna draw a rectangle and treat a bullet point like it's a sliding in horizontal bar chart. Once you have your rectangle, you can just start typing and um, you can type words. So I'm gonna do this this way because this is a demo and I'm just gonna copy these words. Control C, go over here, double click in, Control V. And I'm just going to now use the uh, up and down arrows, up and down, and let's just say that's about the size I want, holding down shift while doing that. And let's just confirm I don't have an outline on it. And if I want that text a little bigger, I can do control shift greater than or control shift less than and get that size the way I like. Let's say that's about right, okay? Now, as you can see, I've got a couple other ones. So if you had a couple other bullets, you can just can uh, hit control shift drag, or you can do control D and uh, drag that down. So let's just do this for quick paces here. I'm just going to double click in here, copy that, paste that in here. And uh, let's do that one more time. Let's go down here, download the demo deck, just so you can see how the donuts are made. And um, let's say I want this one about right here-ish, something like that. And I want this one a little bit lower. I don't want you to waste your time. I want you to hit down, hit the, uh, select the first one, hold shift, and then click on the other ones. Then use your vertical distribute tool to get them nice and even. And if you don't have that, you'd wanna go to home, arrange, align, and distribute vertically. Hopefully you're seeing why I've added all these already to my quick access toolbar. And I did that by at some point in the past year or two, go 
going in and right clicking them and adding them through my quick access toolbar. Got a whole video on that, so check out presentation plus ups if you're new to the channel and see how that works. Now I want this one to feel kind of like a bar graph where this one is a couple of grid ticks down. This one's a couple of grid ticks down below that one. And I go, you know what? I want this to be a little different color. So I'm gonna use my color theme, which has already been preset, yet another video in the past. So check out my channel, like, subscribe, hit that notifications button. And we're going to go ahead and set that. And let's go download demo deck. We're gonna go back to our theme and let's say we wanna use that one. So we're being fast, we're keeping this on brand. Now what I might wanna do is select all of these and put a little drop shadow on, just to add a little pop to it. Now in this case, I'm using an external drop shadow just from a stylistic, because this background is one that we want to have um, where it feels like it's cut the blue background in half, okay? Now if you notice here, this blue background, uh, excuse me, our white background is locked. So if we didn't have that locked and we're moving things around, you could easily uh, misplace it. So once you have this set where you like, just go ahead and hit that lock button and you're off to the races, okay? So let's say we have these kind of like where we want them. If you hit control G, you can group them. You can uh, vertically center them and then you can hit control shift G to ungroup them. So it's just a quick way to grab everything, lock them in place and then ungroup them so we can do some cool stuff, okay? So if you want those to appear and have this neat little transition, kind of like they're doing right here, what I would do is I would select them all. I'd hit Control C to copy them. I'm going fast now because I'm assuming you can go ahead and hit pause. And you're gonna notice that on the previous slide, I put them here in a spatial arrangement because I want them to come in and whip in at different speeds. So how I did that is I pasted them on the previous slide. And then quite frankly, what you do is you just mess it up. So in this case, what I might do is something like this. And this is again, an art, not a science is I am going to left justify each one of these. While they're all selected, I'm gonna hold my right arrow, just move them off stage, excuse me. And um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of mess them up here. So how do I want them to come in? I want perhaps this first one to come in the fastest. I want this one to come in a little slower. It has less room to, has less ground to cover. And this one I want to come in real slow, okay? So that's on slide two, on slide three, if I go on this slide and pull up the transitions menu right here, I can hit preview and see how that is. And maybe you go, you know what? I actually want the first one to arrive first. So what I might do is reverse that and go, you know, I'm gonna hold shift, bring that over. And then maybe this one really is covering a lot of ground. Now let's see how that looks when we go ahead and give it a peek. In preview. I think that's a little more organic in terms of the one, two, three punch right there. So just a, a nice way that we can add a little style to that. So hopefully you can see that when you use morph in combination with shapes and just type on the shape, you can do a lot of things really by getting away from just straight up bullets and adding a little visual to it. Okay. So some of the plus up options I had there for you beside that would be the ability to then, if you said, okay, I wanna build this as bullets, then I can take my background shape and just really change it and highlight different features. So we might've just said, okay, let's talk about shape animations. And then we did everything that we just did. We've got that ability to do that, okay? So, and then if you said, okay, I want one of these to be a featured section slide, then you could just grab your background shape, make it big, and you've got that set, okay? so. Hopefully you can see I'm giving you bullet point alternatives right now in this deck. And to help you, if you wanna get a little more of a ground starter, um, what I'm gonna do is have this deck on a box link. I'm even going to include the fonts since these are special Helvetica new fonts or Noya fonts, I believe as it's called. So if you wanna install those on your PC or Mac and then experiment with some cool upscale fonts, you're more than welcome to courtesy of me. Just tell your friends pass along the, the information. If you need some corporate ID to get the fonts on your computer, you're kind of on your own on that one. Sorry about that. But um, hopefully this is something that you can see, maybe you've drawn a little inspiration of. So please tell a friend if you like it, subscribe, like, post your comments below if there's anything I can do for you. In the meantime, thanks so much and make it a great week.